Welcome back, everybody. We are restarting our March 31st, 2020 regular town board meeting. I have very good news to report. Alexis Kim said yes. So on behalf of the town board, and I'm sure from all of Niskuna, we wish you the best, um, a life full of happiness and love. And uh, we're so happy that we could celebrate this momentous occasion with you. So with that said, I'm gonna move on to our next public comment. This public comment is from George Zhang of 4069 Windsor Drive. And he writes, Dear Sir or Madam, we are residents of 4069 Windsor Drive. We are writing to express our strong objection to the connection of Windsor Drive to River Road. The connection will cause safety issues and devalue the existing houses in the community. Your consideration is highly appreciated. That concludes that public comment. On to our next public comment from Susan Foote. She writes, to whom it may concern, I would like to voice my extreme concern regarding the above extension. My husband and I have lived on the corner of Windsor Drive and Men Menlo Park Road for 25 years. We were the third house on our street when we moved here and it was a beautifully treed area with little to no traffic. Over the past years, we've seen the area grow and what was once a quiet area close, close to amenities has now turned into a pseudo highway. If this extension is allowed to go through, the speeding traffic from River Road to Van Antwerp Road will be horrific. We ask that this extension be terminated and that the farmland be put to better use for the entire Nisguna community. That concludes that public comment. On to our next public comment from Raj and Sonia Shetty of 4040 Windsor Drive. And they write, to the Nisguna Town Board, dear sir slash madam, we live on Windsor Drive at 4044 and heard about the extension to Windsor Drive recently and are very concerned. One, connecting Windsor Drive to River Road is a major change and we, the residents of Windsor Drive, did not receive any direct notification from the town about this proposed extension and the opportunity to comment at the board meeting. Two, this proposed project will cause a major change in the traffic pattern. We had already experienced a significant increase in traffic volume and the vehicle speed with the first extension to Briar Ridge and a further extension would turn it into a major street and make it totally unsafe for the kids and the families on the residential street. Three, we paid a premium price when we purchased our house 15 years ago. Connecting the street to a major road will cause a further and major drop in our property value. We therefore think this is a very bad idea are strongly opposed to this plan and ask that you drop this plan for Windsor Drive extension. Thank you. That concludes that public comment. Our next public comment is from Connie Trigger of 4072 Windsor Drive. She writes to the members of the town board, my name is Connie Trigger and I live at 4072 Windsor Drive. I'm writing to express my concern about the proposed about the prospect of connecting Windsor Drive to River Road through the development proposed for the former Kelts Farm. My primary concern is the negative impact it will have on traffic on Windsor Drive and the streets that branch from it. Connecting Windsor Drive to a road traveled by 12,000 vehicles a day, according to traffic studies done as part of planning for the roundabout at River Road and Rosendale Roads, cannot avoid turning Windsor Drive into a byway, taking people through a quiet residential neighborhood to Knott Street, Baltown Road, and points beyond. The roundabout mentioned above is just a two minute drive from the proposed development. In two emails to the town planner and in my March 9th public hearing, I have asked what traffic studies the planning board will have performed as they make their decision on the Windsor Drive connection. The project just a two minute drive from the upcoming roundabout that also warrants closer study. My emails were not answered and the only mention of a traffic study at the public hearing was at the end of the planning board's discussion on the topic when a vague suggestion was made to the developer that he might want to do one. A traffic study would provide answers to questions such as, how will connecting Windsor Drive to River Road impact traffic volume on Windsor Drive? What speeds can be expected from that volume of traffic on that type of roadway? Will additional, more timely snow plowing on that stretch of road be required of the town, placing a burden on resources? How will traffic coming through the development from Windsor Drive and attempting to exit onto River Road impact the flow of vehicles traveling down River Road? How long would it be before traffic apps begin rerouting vehicles through this new development? It is not a stretch to predict that the answers would be less than desirable. 
During the board's discussion period on March 9th, a significant amount of time was spent suggesting traffic calming configurations that could be added to the layout of the development's roads. These included multiple right angle turns within the new development and a road table where it would join Windsor Drive. I have to admit that I was a bit stunned that there didn't seem to be any recognition that any slowing that either of these features created would end as soon as drivers enter the wide, fairly straight, curbless Windsor Drive. Several board members expressed that something has to be done about vehicle speeding on Windsor. Again, it I was flabbergasted. How would adding more traffic to Windsor help with that? The town's comprehensive plan was mentioned to the public hearing multiple times. Listeners were left with the impression that board members' hands are tied because of it. A neighbor shared a portion of the comprehensive plan that states in part, quote, extending the Windsor Drive multi-purpose path to River Road should be a town priority as it would significantly improve town connectivity to MBH, BHT, and Blatnick Park. Not sure what that um, MBH, BHT is. They continue, once viewed as primarily for recreational use, multi-use paths are now recognized as important non-motorized vehicular links connecting residents with work, school, and shopping. It would appear that using the comprehensive plan as a guide would support restricting any connect connection of Windsor Drive to River Road that allows motorized vehicles. Another board member expressed that he didn't want the new development to be isolated from the rest of the community. If I were looking for a new home, I think a house on a street that is not essentially a cut through for a busy road from one side of town to the other would be a more desirable, not less. The next road to the north, Rembrandt, is a cul-de-sac. So there is precedent in that area for a self-contained neighborhood. And finally, speaking of precedents, one of the final comments during the planning board's discussion period was made by the developer who said that the owner of 10 acres between the northern edge of the Celts Farm property and Rembrandt wants to do, quote, the same thing, so the board should expect to see him soon. The planning board's decision on this development will set a precedent for the next. I hope that the town board can see the negative impact that connecting Windsor Drive with River Road for vehicular traffic would have. Thank you for your consideration. That ends that public comment. Next public comment is from Raul and Florence Chakawala of 4089 Windsor Drive. And they write, Dear town board members, we, and we Florence and Raul Chakawala reside on 4089 Windsor Drive in Nisuna. Our understanding is that your next meeting will take place on the 31st of March online due to circumstances that you, that you at that meeting may take up proposed extension of Windsor Drive to River Road in relation to a proposed housing development on River Road. If so, we would like to convey our strongest objection to the Windsor Drive extension. <clears throat> Our fear is that such an extension will lead to a GPS shortcut from River Road to Knott Street in the directions of Ellis Hospital, Schenectady, downtown, and Casino. This, we are convinced, will significantly increase the traffic on Windsor Drive. As such, there is an ongoing speeding issue on Windsor, as notified by just about all of our neighbor participants at the hearing. Besides a big jump in noise levels, the new wave of speeding cars and other vehicles are likely to create safety hazard for the children of Windsor, we must warn you. As far as speed bumps are concerned, our concern is that drivers would speed up in between the bumps. We also would like to convey our dismay upon learning that at the end of the town planning board's hearing on the 9th of March, where much of our specific objections were thoughtfully and emotionally raised, the board in conclusion gave certain impression that the extension was a done deal already. To us, this meant that the public hearings was for show only. We did not expect the board to immediately change their minds, but at least seriously consider our shared real life concerns. In fact, two of our neighbors wondered out loud during their presentation if a decision was already made. Fortunately, their instincts turned out to be correct. We would like the town board to take note of this behavior by the planning board. Truly, if the proposed plan to connect Windsor Drive with River Road were to proceed, this highly coveted and valued street will turn into a thoroughfare which will be a real loss to very special residential and schooling township of this unit. We with our fellow neighbors must trust that the town board will give our shared concern, concerns deserve it consideration and care to at least conduct a traffic slash children's safety study prior to allowing such an extension to proceed. Thank you in advance. That concludes that public comment. On to the next public comment. It's from Saddam Abis of 25 Briar Ridge Road. 
when they write to whom it may concern. I want to express my concern and objection to the Windsor Road extension for the following reasons. One, it will increase traffic to the neighborhood and make it less safe for our children. Two, it will decrease the property value of existing homes. I appreciate your consideration of these points during your deliberations. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from Roxana Safey. of 4033 Windsor Drive. She writes, hello, my name is Rixana Safi. I wanted to express my concern and disappointment when I was made aware of this proposal for a few reasons. Firstly, having lived in Windsor since 1995 and seeing the rate and speed of traffic increase every year and the town turning the other way and letting it become a thoroughfare with no safety measures being taken to ensure the safety of the children, seniors, and all others, all others living on the street around and also those walking slash driving through. Secondly, putting so much weight on a comprehensive plan, which was made before we all carried a smartphone slash GPS, directing us all, directing us and all other traffic to the quickest routes. This route might invite the traffic from the casino to take a shortcut through. Hence, it is an outdated plan and needs to be revisited to keep up with the present day needs. Thirdly, in trying to enhance the value of future development, the town knowingly devalues the value of present local taxpayers as the, development, as the developer mentioned, and we continuing to pay the same high taxes as other comparable slash quieter streets. If so, our taxes should be fairly reduced. In conclusion, a connecting bike path will, best will be best enhanced without devaluing any property and without compromising the safety and sanctity of our neighborhood. Thank you for listening. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from Javed Safi of 4033 Windsor Drive. He writes, Honorable Yasmin Syed and honorable members of the Niskuna Town Board, I hope this letter finds you all to be well. I am writing to express my strong opposition to the proposed extension of Windsor Drive to River Road. I've been a resident on this street since 1995 and have watched how the character of the street has been transformed from the addition of the bicycle path to each successive subdivision. As each subdivision was built with connections to other mosquito streets, we have watched the volume and speed of traffic increase, and as a result, the safety on the street has worsened. I understand the rationale for each of the subdivisions. However, this last extension, proposing to connect it to River Road, will make it a cut through for a large amount of commercial and residential traffic and will make it even more unsafe. This, was, this will result in a significant change in the character of the neighborhood and hence devaluation of the homes. Over the years, the town has done nothing to monitor the speed of the traffic or any safety measures such as stop signs or speed humps to reduce the speed. At a recent planning board meeting on March 8th, myself and other residents have voiced our objections to this. We can never get a rational answer as to why this connection is deemed a necessity for the town. The phrase, quote, it has been on the conference of town plan, unquote, for years has been the mantra for justifying the need to connect Windsor Drive to River Road. It has been mentioned that this was placed on the town map in the early 1990s before a home was built, and today no one can tell you why. Certainly things have changed in this unit over the past 25 years, and I'm sure many Items on the comprehensive town plan have been reviewed as to their need, and yet this item has never been reviewed to determine its necessity. Currently, there are several routes for traffic to get from River Road to the Town Hall and to Ball Town Road. Thus, it is unclear why another one is needed. If there is a reason, I do feel that the town should explain to the residents what it is and what measure the town will take to ensure safety for the residents. Certainly the bicycle path is not a safety measure and gives the impression that this is a high speed thoroughfare. Thank you for addressing my concerns and I hope all the residents of Windsor Drive will get the opportunity to discuss this further with best regards. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from Miriam. I don't have an address and this individual writes, I, oppo I oppose to the extension. And that concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from Wong Ji Soong and Sin Yong Choi of 4097 Windsor Drive. And they write, 
Hello, I know there is an attempt to extend Windsor Drive to River Road. As many residents near Windsor Drive expressed their concerns in the public hearing, I also wanted to convey my strong objection for the extension. I believed the proposed construction should benefit both the constructor slash new residents and existing Windsor community. However, the proposed road connection does not benefit the Windsor Drive neighborhood. Just an extension of Workman Trail should benefit both new and existing residents. Please reconsider the road connection. That concludes that public comment. Our next public comment is from Paolina and Milan Netsevich. They reside at 4056 Windsor Drive. And they write, to whom it may concern. As residents of 4056 Windsor Drive of eight years, we are strongly opposed to the extension of Windsor Drive and its connection to River Road. We have concerns over traffic, that it may be increased connecting Schenectady from the casino all the way through the heart of Niskayuna, passing by Niskayuna High School area. We believe that the safety will be reduced, speeding will be common, it will introduce completely new traffic patterns and bring drivers that never use this area to commute. Many children walk to high school and back, ride bicycles, bicycles on the sidewalk and bike path, or wait for the bus, and new, this new plan brings a lot of concern for us parents of four children that are in middle school and high school. We believe we can expect more crime rate in general in the neighborhood. The neighborhood of Windsor Drive is high tax property and we knew that before purchasing our property. No extension of Windsor Drive was a matter of fact, was as a matter of fact a selling point from our builder. The opening of the road will devalue our properties for something we paid more taxes year after year. With the hope that concerns of residents of not only Windsor Drive, but we are sure of Knott Street and neighboring streets will be heard, understood by the town board, and plan to connect the casino area will, with direct line to River Road will be stopped. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from Arthur Pasquariello. They live on 4016 Windsor Drive. And they write, to Supervisor Syed and town board members, my name is Arthur Pasquariello. My wife, Lydia, and I live at 4016 Windsor Drive. I'm writing to express our objection to the extension of Windsor Drive to connect to River Road. We have lived on Windsor Drive since 1994, and I believe we are the longest tenured residents on that street. We love our current neighborhood, and we want to keep it that way. A, quote, neighborhood, unquote. If the roadway extension is approved, it will significantly increase the volume of traffic on Windsor Drive. Yes, it will make it much easier for residents of other communities to travel from Erie Boulevard to Knott Street and through Windsor Drive to get to work at Capel and the Research Lab. But that direct route is accomplished to the detriment of the homeowners on Windsor Drive. I can envision lines of traffic in the morning as workers try to enter busy River Road from Windsor during the morning rush hour at quitting time, the same volume of traffic will be on Windsor. Our neighborhood will change. I have been hearing for years that the extension is in the comprehensive plan for the town. Please do not blindly rely on that concept. The plans from 20, 2003 and 2013 established many goals. If you read through those documents carefully, many goals for various reasons are not accomplished. While funding is probably the main reason, change in conditions for a project is another. The comprehensive plan provides for that. It is meant to be a flexible document. On page nine of the 2013 plan, it is stated that the plan, quote, should be reviewed periodically to ensure that its goals, objectives, and implement implementation tasks are relevant to the changing conditions of the town. The town board should review the plan, the 2013 plan, within the next five years and undertake a complete update within 10 years, unquote. On Windsor, the situation has changed. 12 additional homes have been built. Traffic has increased substantially. Families with young children have moved into the newer homes and the parents face a growing concern for traffic safety. Please take note of the changing conditions. The roadway should not be extended without consideration of the serious concerns expressed by the residents. On page nine under, quote, area of transportation, unquote, plan states, quote, however, in no instance should transportation planning be concerned with transportation services alone, unquote. Further, it states, quote, as road traffic and speeds increase, the road becomes a barrier, safety becomes a problem, and the sense of the neighborhood is lost, unquote. This describes the situation on Windsor perfectly if the extension is approved. Please carefully consider this issue. Your neighbors on Windsor Drive do not deserve this traffic invasion. I have one more request. 
The public hearing for this project is scheduled for April 28th. Please delay the hearing if it can only be held via teleconference. The resident should have the opportunity to, direct, to address you directly. And that concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from Cooper Steele. At 1328 Hawthorne Road, Cooper writes, I would ask that the town board consider rescinding or amending the ordinances that deal with backyard chickens so more people are able to keep chickens for egg production. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from Tiffany Chang. Don't have an address. She writes, Supervisor Syed, I'm hoping that the subject of permitting backyard hen keeping is discussed during the town council meeting. In times as these, I feel that permitting hens for the production of eggs for personal family use would be beneficial to the mental and nutritional health of the community. Having lived in a community that permitted hens, I know that when properly regulated, they are extremely beneficial to the environment. Hens do not make significant amounts of noise, but do an excellent job at keeping tick populations low, which is important due to the prevalence of Lyme disease. If kept contained, free range restricted due to traffic and neighborhood concerns, their presence is hardly noticed. All negative concerns can easily be, be addressed with a few restrictions, such as prohibiting the sale of eggs, number of hens permitted per family. I recommend six as a limit, with exceptions for larger families, such as one chicken per family member, plan approval for the location and size of coops and runs, backyards away from road site and three square feet per chicken in a coop and eight square feet in run for health of the chickens. And feed being kept in tight locking containers or indoors to avoid unintentional wildlife feeding and increased populations. Many of our neighboring towns, such as Boston Spa, Colony, and Clifton Park have all made accommodations for backyard chickens. I encourage this unit to follow suit. The ability to generate food during the pandemic could make a huge difference, but in the future, this can be viewed as a human rights issue that spans the boundaries of age, wealth, race, gender, and religion. Self-sufficiency self is important for mental health. It can give the elderly purpose, aid their nutritional health, and ease their financial burdens. It can help struggling families make up a portion of their food, make up a portion of their food budget. It allows children the opportunity for responsibility and to see the fruits of their labor. A small allowance for a chicken permit could really make a large difference for our community. Thank you for your time. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from Haley Dances. She writes, I live in Esmuna and I'm interested in owning backyard chickens. They are great for pest control, specifically ticks. This reduces the need for harmful pesticides. Raising chickens is an amazing opportunity for young children to learn about where food comes from, develop good work habits, and learn the importance of self-sufficiency. A lot of our lot sizes are huge compared to other areas. Third acre lots are double and triple the size of many other average lot sizes in nearby communities. This is big enough to support hens. To compete with other communities such as Albany, this unit must allow homeowners the ability to sensibly own chickens. Any concerns held against backyard chickens have been solved by these communities in reasonable and living, livable ways. A few regulations such as coop size, fencing, and number of hens would negate any potential claims against chickens. The current zoning seems to limit chickens to one acre lots or larger. This is much too restrictive. Most importantly, the current economic and medical crisis necessitates a return to a more self-sufficient lifestyle for many people in our community. I propose re-examining our current livestock laws in support of allowing homeowners more flexibility, flexibility in how they use their land. That concludes that public comment. We have our next public comment is from Chris Dances. And he writes, I support new rules to be put in place to allow for more res residents to responsibly own chickens in this unit. With some sensible restrictions and regulations, virtually everyone could benefit from new rules to allow for easier ownership for backyard chickens. Chickens can help to reduce the number of ticks in the area, teach valuable lessons to children, and help provide local and sustainable sources for food. These benefits can positively affect residents who are not even owners. There are known situations for rules that allow for flexibility of ownership while minimizing any undesired impacts for the community. Plenty of other districts around the capital region have already done so, why not us? 
My wife and I are young homeowners, fairly, fairly new to this area, but we hope to stay here for a long time. Please consider the long-term benefit rules, benefits new rules could give for this community. That concludes that public comment. Our next public comment is from Sylvia Broncatelli of 2133 Lynn Plaza. They write, dear members of the town board and Supervisor Syed, my name is Sylvia Broncatelli. I've lived at 2133 Lynn Plaza since January of 1997. I am writing on behalf of myself, my husband Michael, and others who have expressed an interest in changing the zoning laws in order to allow domestic chickens on land less than an acre in the town. My husband and I owned four chickens briefly several years ago before realizing they were not allowed. We promptly got rid of them, but over the years have realized how much we miss the ability to care for our needs in a manner that is self-sustaining. On our half acre lot, we have an ever-growing, ever-changing garden. We grow enough to support ourselves with blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, tomatoes, peppers, lettuce, eggplant, zucchini, cucumbers, potatoes, and other vegetables as we see fit. It gives us much pleasure to share our produce with our family and neighbors when possible. Add to that the list of fresh eggs and the benefits are endless. We feel that this is a time in which we need to look at alternative ways to take care of our needs and those of our family. What better way than to supply our own needs? We realize, of course, that many people feel that chickens do not belong in the suburban setting, but I am certain that my own neighbors will attest to the fact that for the brief time we had them in our yard, there were no problems and that it was a positive experience for all. Naturally, as with anything, rules would have to be set up and followed, but I feel that chickens cause no more concern than any other domestic animal, with the added benefit of reducing the tick population in their environment. Thank you for your consideration on this matter. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment. This is from Robert Hess of 117 Comanche Trail. Robert writes, as a resident who would like to stay informed, I have real concerns about the recent agendas that have been posted on the town's website for the Water, Sewer, and Engineering Committee meetings, which took place on February 7th, 2020 and March 5th, 2020. The agendas only had generic topic headings and no detail about the matters that would be discussed. As a result, residents could not make an informed decision about whether to attend the meetings. The Water, Sewer, and Engineering Committee Chair, Councilwoman Murphy McGraw, had no problem with the issue in the past when she chaired the Public Works Committee. The Public Works Committee always had a very detailed agenda which listed every item that would be discussed. Why the drastic change? My concern is that Councilwoman McGraw is making a conscious decision to post a bare bones agenda on the town's website because she doesn't want the public to show up. I know that her committee needs to address important issues like water and sewer rates and whether to ramp up the number of trucks delivering organic waste to the wastewater treatment plant to generate revenue. Is she trying to keep the town residents in the dark about discussions which take place at her committee? If so, it's unfortunate that Councilwoman Murphy McGraw has not embraced transparency, especially when it comes to the wastewater treatment plant. I'm also writing in support of Resolution 2020-60, which would adopt procedures for the town's legislative committees. Defining the specific committee members who can vote makes sense. The rules that govern how the committees operate should be in writing. In light of the significant authority of the Finance Committee to authorize the use of taxpayer money, the policy proposed by the town's comptroller should be codified. When this resolution was addressed at the February board meeting, Councilwoman Murphy McGraw moved to table the motion. Why not discuss the merits of the motion in a public forum as Councilwoman Perez Jaquith suggested? What was the additional information that Councilwoman Murphy McGraw needed before she could vote? Hasn't the substance of resolution 2020-60 been a discussion item at the Finance Committee since January? When the motion was table, uh, tabled, I was encouraged that there seemed to be a general commitment by the board members to take action at the next meeting. Fast forward a month and resolution 2020-60 didn't even make it on the agenda. I have no idea how this resolution can be controversial and I encourage the board to take action on this resolution soon. Currently, Councilwoman Murphy McGraw has an incentive to post generic committee meeting agendas on the town's website to discourage public participation. And she has an incentive to table action and discussion in an open forum like the town board meeting so that issues can be discussed in the relative privacy of the committee meetings. 
There is a solution to both problems. The town should record the committee meetings and post them on YouTube. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from Linda Rizzo of 2229 Fairlawn Parkway. Linda writes, residents have received emails from town hall during this difficult situation. I would like to see the emails include supervisor and town board, though this may be an innocent oversight, it is important to recognize that you are working as a team and not like a lone ranger. Despite the coronavirus, we still have an $800,000 budget deficit. This deficit will not evaporate as the virus over time. It is the supervisor's responsibility to make budget cuts to eliminate this deficit. The town cannot override the 2% tax cap. If the supervisor does not recommend the cuts, then the board members must do something. The school board is like Nero, fiddling, with, fiddling while Rome burns, proceeding with capital projects, overriding the tax cap. Our town board must use their political common sense and concern for the residents that the school board sorely lacks. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from T. Paul Chow. They write, dear sir slash madam, I am writing to strongly object to the proposed extension of Windsor Drive to the River Road. Windsor Drive area where we are living is a quiet residential area. Adding the proposed extension would provide for motorists a shortcut to Schenectady and hence greatly increase the traffic volume and destroy the tranquility of our neighborhood. In addition, there are many young children who play in the yards in the summertime and the increased traffic would potentially endanger them. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment is very brief from Jocelyn McDonald, new address. Hey, right, sending my support of backyard chickens in Eskiuna, thank you. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from John Lamellon of 1106 Glen Meadow Court. John writes, it goes without saying that we are living in difficult times. Businesses are closed, social gatherings are canceled, and most of us are being told to stay home. One way that we have found to break the stress and get a, chan get a change of scenery is to go for a walk in the neighborhood. This has actually turned out to be a small silver lining as we greet our neighbors and friends from opposite sides of the street. My wife and I were on just such a walk this morning when we saw a town of Miss Unit Department of Public Works truck coming down the road. The driver smiled and waved to us as he passed. This simple act reminded me of the myriad of friendly and dedicated town employees who continue to work for our town during the pandemic. I'm sure that they all have families and would rather be home with them, but they are not home. They are working for all of us and they deserve recognition for their service. Additionally, I want to thank each of you for your time and energy in helping to manage our town in these difficult times. We must continue to work together to creatively find ways to help each other, especially the folks most directly affected by this crisis. A special call out goes to the Niskayuna Police and Fire Departments, as well as all of our first responders and healthcare professionals who are continuing to work to keep us safe. Thank you. I couldn't agree more, John. That concludes that public comment. Our next public comment is from Jennifer Lean of 221 Brittany Place. They write, as residents of Brittany Drive, we are against the development of an access road from Windsor Drive to River Road. We built our house here because it was a quiet street without pass-through traffic. Our children feel safe playing outside and we feel safe having our children play outside. An access road will clearly have a lot more pass-through traffic, making this unsafe for our children to play. I do feel this would be a significant value as well. I do hope this request is denied. That concludes that public comment. Next public comment is from Amy White Soule of 4080 Windsor Drive. They write, I am writing to express strong opposition to both the proposed development of Kelts Farm and to the extension of Windsor Drive. I join the chorus of my neighbors, all of whom speak of dangerous driving on the road. In the nine years my family and I have lived at the corner of Windsor Drive and Brittany Place, I have personally witnessed numerous cars speeding through the area daily. I voiced my concerns to the police chief Louis Brand in 2011 and made numerous suggestions to improve the situation, all to no avail. Whether or not this extension and development is part of a quote long-term, long-range plan, unquote, is entirely besides the point. 
As we are all acutely aware in this present global pandemic, plans that have been made in the past may no longer be practical or even possible due to the evolving conditions. What was desired in 1985 may not necessarily be feasible today. There are too many residents now living on Windsor Drive and the surrounding streets that have legitimate fears for their own safety and the safety of others. 40 years ago when this plan was proposed, there was no such concern due to the few people living in the neighborhood. Now the situation has changed and to blindly charge ahead with an outdated proposal seems foolish at best and potentially tragic at worst. I beseech you all to please listen to your constituents and our very serious, very real concerns. That ends that public comment. Next public comment is from Lorraine Zabin of 2455 Brookshire Drive. Maureen writes, congratulations to Frances E. Wall and her promotion to our first female office on the Niskanen Police Department back in 1985. Franny, a lifelong resident of the town, veteran in the United States Marine Corps, proud parent and grandparent, a 35-year employee of devotion, service, and professionalism to the town and its residents. I'm sorry not to be able to attend this wonderful occasion to clap ever so hardly. I not believe the number of resolutions relating to purchase Relating to the purchases of equipment from our highway department, are these purchases part of the 2020 budget or are they new purchases part of the extraordinary bonding the town, the town entered into in January 2020? It would seem to me that the town is already in debt. Does the new chairman of the highway department relate our town budget to the NISC unit school board who seems to have exclusive financial resources other than taxpayers? Good night, let's hope Normal life will come back soon. Thank you, Marine Zabin. That concludes that public comment. And our last public comment of the evening is from Miss Amy Hawanski. Let's pull it up now. Amy Hawanski of 2833 Whitmire Drive. She writes, in regards to resolution 2020-60, I'm concerned that the rules for committee procedures don't specifically create a privilege of the floor time for people to speak during committee meetings. Instead, the procedures state that, quote, members of the public may be invited to speak at any time during the meeting by the presiding, off by, by the presiding chair. The presiding chair has the discretion and authority to include, quote, public participation, unquote, and the order of business set forth in subsection D as he slash she sees fit. By allowing the presiding chair to include public participation only as he slash she sees fit means that the presiding chair could prevent a member of the public from speaking about a controversial topic. The presiding chair could in effect stop a resident or public member from bringing up topics of concern if the presiding chair does not want to get involved with these topics. Instead, the procedural rule should state that privilege of the floor is a mandatory item for each meeting. And that is our last public comment of the evening. I'm going to ask if anybody would like to take a brief respite. I would like to proceed. Okay. It's already 8.30 and we haven't started, so. So we're going to head right into our committee reports at the conclusion of all of the red public comments. So with that being said, we're going to begin as if we were actually in the town board room. We're going to start with Councilwoman Jaquith. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, I'd like to start by offering our condolences to Councilman Delarada, whose father-in-law recently passed away, and also staff member Brian Backus, who recently lost his mother. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with uh, you as you mourn this loss. Uh, we hope our residents have been holding up well under the circumstances. There are a number of resources available, including county services, which I and I'm sure others will touch on shortly, and the supervisor's been providing briefings on those periodically as well. Please reach out if you need assistance. Uh, many of our residents are helping others during this time of crisis. It's a really great community, and I thank you all for all you're doing. We thank you all for all you're doing this time of crisis. 
Uh, thank you to the artists who contributed the artwork that's uh, currently uh, decorating the walls of the town board meeting. We'll be recognizing these artists in an upcoming town board meeting once we are able to present ceremonial resolutions in person. Uh, on to community programs. So uh, Easter Parade and Spring Soccer are canceled due to our current crisis, unfortunately. Uh, summer program book and registrations, they were supposed to open up and on the first, but uh, once we have a better idea of when um, things will ease up a bit, we'll, we'll get the uh, book and the information out. Uh, the driving range is currently scheduled to open up on May 2nd. Again, hopefully we'll be able to move forward with that in a timely fashion. Uh, you'll get email information about all those things. Um, I want to talk about our senior center. It's been closed, uh, but our senior center staff has continued to work tirelessly to clean the facility and also to maintain contact with our residents. They've been calling, they've been writing postcards, they've been keeping in touch with our senior citizens. Uh, they've also continued to provide um, services, uh, rides, and trips to grocery stores and deliveries. I'd like to acknowledge the following folks, uh, Linda O'Brien, Robin McPartland, Edie Canizzo, Lisa Stevens, Bob Capen, Ann Tracy, Ken Brown, and Vito Caruso for going above and beyond in service to our residents during this crisis. Uh, highways, while well, the highway department's been working at 50% capacity, they're still out there working. Crews are working on trimming trees and repairing uh, small washouts and doing some lawn repair uh, from the snowplow season. We appreciate everyone's patience. A small crew has been planting trees using last year's uh, tree plant list. Uh, the yard waste pickup will begin uh, on April 6th, that's next week. That'll start up as a random pickup uh, and then a set schedule is up on our website, you know, set by zones as we've done previously. Uh, you may see trucks out earlier, however. Um, also, I wanna talk about paving, once paving begins, I'll be reporting at the meetings uh, as to what streets are being done. Parks, uh, parks, playground equipment and facilities have been closed due to the COVID crisis. Uh, the last info indicates that the, the virus can uh, live on hard, shiny surfaces for up to 72 hours. So um, please be safe, stay away from that equipment. Um, also, uh, Ray Smith, our superintendent, wanted me to report that he'll be bringing park staff in to do some leaf pickup um, very soon. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have the county uh, has uh, emergency number 518-621-3536. It's um, everywhere. Uh, Schenectady County and the Schenectady County Foundation are partnering with many community partners to support families in our area uh, during this time. Um, the coalition was created to help address non-medical coronavirus related issues to ensure those who are quarantined or isolated, seniors and others at risk, uh, that they're able to get basic supplies when they need and that everyone's able to remain home. Again, that number is 518-621. 3536. Um, and uh, I want to conclude that we will hold the next Highway Parks and Recreation meeting next week, uh, April 8th at 9 a.m., by uh, the same fashion that we're holding this meeting. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now going to move on to Councilman Delorado. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, there hasn't been much going on uh, since my last meeting, uh, with a lot being on hold. Our big task uh, and big priorities to keep progress on a riverfront, namely the River's Ledge and Aqueduct Park, and uh, we hope to keep that going as best we can. Another task is to keep an eye on our current construction and the limitations that these troubling times have imposed on it. Um, my next meeting uh, will be the first Friday of April, and I believe it will be on the same uh, discourse as we're currently on. Um, 
my prayers are with all during these times, and uh, hopefully we will get through them as we have in the past. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now going to move on to Councilwoman McGraw. Thank you, Supervisor. The Public Works Committee and the Public Works Department have been very busy through this time. They are considered essential employees. Um, very grateful for all the work of our um, Public Works Superintendent, Matt Ghetto. He has done a tremendous job leading his force to ensure that our water continues to be safe um, and is reliable. Our sewer service is working and everyone in the town and all our businesses are being served well by our water and sewer department. Um, the crews are working staggered shifts in order to uh, minimize any interaction, really maximize social distancing um, while still providing essential services. S things like the spring highway flushing, um, excuse me, hydrant flushing is postponed um, until after we get um, some more direction from the state as it relates to um, non-essential activities. So we will be waiting on that. A new schedule will be out um, both in the Daily Gazette. We always put things on the website. Um, my committee always does a lot of outreach into the community um, because they're always open and transparent. So I, um, we will get that word out about the hydrant flushing as soon as we can. The transfer station. I know that many people in the community rely on the transfer station. We have cut back in order to maximize social distancing to just one day a week, Saturday mornings, um, if folks are finding that troublesome in some way or really um, need it more often, please reach out to me or reach out to Matt Ghetto. But um, we started this last week and it seems to be working well. We don't want to eliminate the service entirely. We know there are a lot of people rely on it. However, um, we do really need to try to cut down on how much our staff and the, um, and the residents are interacting. Um, we have a number of resolutions on this agenda tonight, and one of them that I'm very pleased about is um, one that relates to fire districts one and two and doing some construction and new fueling system. Um, this is project is primarily funded by Assemblyman Phil Steck, $150,000 grant. I'm very grateful for that. Um, and then I just wanted to mention a couple of other things that are going on in town. Um, folks are reaching out. Obviously, they're very concerned. They're reaching out to the supervisor. They're reaching out to individual board members, our, um, our various department heads. They have concerns that might not necessarily relate to the town business, but they are important nonetheless, and they are concerns of theirs. Mental health issues continue to be um, a real struggle for folks. I mean, just relating to the anxiety at, around this pandemic, um, we have seen the governor talk about it every day. We, we listen to him talk about it. There is a statewide 800 number, an 844 number that you can call in if you would like some sort of intake and assessment. Um, it does not provide um, a, an extended period of therapy, but it does help you with some coping skills and things as it relates to the anxiety around um, this current situation we face. Um, I've also been trying to provide some Facebook Lives around some mental health issues. There's going to be one on Thursday, um, helping seniors cope with this situation. Um, Thursday on Facebook Live, um, if you're interested in that, reach out to me. Um, Rosemary mentioned the activities with the county. The county has been a tremendous partner and leader through all of this and um, keeping us up to date on what's happening, um, bringing us in to be helpful to our residents and um, the system that they've put in place to address residents' needs is really second to none. It's really been fantastic. And then just some other um, lighter things that are going on. I think everybody has seen the 518 Rainbow. Um, you know, uh, John Lemlin talked about how nice it is to walk around the neighborhood. It's especially nice to walk around the neighborhood and have your kids hunt down rainbows and look at rainbows in the various um, windows around town. Um, there's another one going on where teddy bears in the windows, another thing that gets, you know, folks looking at things and making the, the trek around the neighborhood a little bit more interesting. Tomorrow night, there's going to be something called Be There, Be Light at seven o'clock. If folks are encouraged to put out a luminary or put out some sort of candle or some sort of light in some way on in their window or on their front steps at seven o'clock, that's being sponsored by um, one of the groups is CR Comeback, Capital Region Comeback. The great Chris Rooney, who just happens to be a CR also, um, has been helping publicize that the committee meeting, um, which everyone is always welcome to attend, is on Thursday at eight o'clock. 
And I think we will do have this same format. Um, so I encourage anybody who would like to participate. Um, that would be great to hear from them as always. Thank you, Supervisor. You're welcome. Thank you so much. We're now gonna move on to Councilman McPartland. Thank you, Supervisor. The Police and Public Safety Committee met on March 3rd. Operationally, uh, the chief reports that we've got a grant from the DCJS for $9,800. You'll see a proposal later, a resolution later, indicating that um, that's going forward. Some other operational things we just discussed, the county speed sign on Rosendale Road. Traffic Enforcement Unit, which started on March 1st, has now been sort of uh, postponed for a little while. We're using um, that officer in a different capacity during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Knott Street and Dean Street, the chief is speaking to the county, and we're working with them for the possibility of a four-way stop at that intersection that is in relationship to the county and their work on Knott Street. We had some reality-based training. Officer Frenier and Koshan uh, attended that, and we we're also sending two more officers to this type of training. As you know, we continue to use uh, training for our officers every capacity that we can. Uh, you're also going to see that we're calling for a public hearing about the alarm monitoring here in the town and the possibility of the town not doing that practice anymore. Uh, regarding fleet and equipment, the chief and the deputy chief are looking into some grant money and the possibility of our officers uh, using tasers or being come equipped with tasers. So there'll be more on that in the, in the future. We'll have a resolution for um, some surplus weapons that are going to be disposed of. Citizen issues, we had two uh, citizens come to our public safety meeting. Citizens are always welcome at our meetings and they will never be cut short. They're allowed to speak as long as they need to, to express any concerns that they have to us. We had a resident, Elizabeth Jacob from Benantra Road come and speak about commercial traffic we got an email from another resident, um, Taurus, Taurus Road, that speaking about commercial traffic. Um, I can click a resident from Consol Road has come to our meetings a couple of times, speaking about traffic on Consol Road. We can install a speed sign on Consol Road to work, try to curb speeding in the town. Community events, there were quite a few community events on the calendar. Most of those probably have been postponed and or canceled. Town code, the winter parking rules officially end today. So as of midnight, it'll be April 1st. So our winter parking rules will then be suspended. Our town clerk attended our meeting, Michelle Martinelli, uh, to speak about the dog census and dog licensing. This program has been very successful had 160 residents come and register their dogs. A lot of people didn't know about this and it's been very successful. It's for the safety of all residents. That, that's the reason that this is being done. It's a state uh, law for ag and markets and it's becoming very successful and it's for the safety of all of our residents. The fire department, uh, the chief was there May 6th. There's a seminar with fire mini EMS about behavioral health. Hopefully that will still take place. Uh, they received a $5,000 grant from the county for free smoke detectors. So if anyone needs smoke detectors, please contact the fire department at District 1. Uh, Personnel-wise, our recruit, our officer, Polera, is progressing well. He's now out on the road with other officers in training. Um, I also want to express my condolences to Delorada and Daly family and the Bacchus family. 
And I also want to send my thanks to you board members. I was reading through the February minutes when I was not at the meeting and um, many of you um, paid your condolences to myself and my family for the passing of my father. So I really do appreciate that. And all the citizens and the staff in the town, just a lot of support. It's greatly appreciated, greatly appreciated. Our next meeting will be April 7th at 8 a.m. And I'm assuming it is going to be by this method of video conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'm gonna move on to the supervisor's report. I would like to begin by echoing the sentiments of uh, many of you who spoke already to extend my condolences to both the Delorado family and the Bacchus family. We are so uh, sorry for your loss. Our prayers and thoughts are with you. And with that, it's really so hard to believe just how much our lives have changed in just over two weeks time. But I'm amazed at how quickly our town has collectively adapted to this new reality and equally so, I am indebted to our staff members for swiftly adapting to our new normal. On March 7th, by executive order 202, Governor Cuomo declared a disaster emergency in the state of New York as a result of the novel coronavirus pandemic. At that time, it seemed that COVID-19 was affecting only downstate communities in New York City, though in quick succession, we realized containment was not limited to just those areas. In response, we had to take fast and necessary steps to protect our staff and our residents. So on March 15th, I issued a proclamation declaring a local state of emergency in the town of Miskiuna by the virtue of the authority vested in me by Article 2B of the New York State Executive Law this local state of emergency took effect at 5 p.m. on March 15th. It is valid for a period of 30 days or until rescinded or extended by a subsequent order. This local state of emergency effectively closed town hall, the justice court, the senior center and other town owned facilities to the general public. By subsequent emergency order 2020-1, and emergency order 2020-2 that I have issued and been approved by the New York State Department of Health, the continued closure of town hall, the justice court, the senior center and other town owned facilities remains in effect. In addition, our town playgrounds, pavilions, picnic tables, outdoor grills and the dog park will remain closed until further notice. Town courts, fields and paths remain open, but again, they're open for passive use only. So that means no group practices, games, or other such group gatherings. And you must maintain a six foot distance between yourself and other members of the public. As of now, I will continue to issue concurrent emergency orders, which last for five days each, pursuant to executive law section 24, to keep the aforementioned facilities close to the public until at least Wednesday, April 15th, possibly longer. This is consistent with the governor's executive order 202.11 declaring schools remain closed until April 15, at which time a continued closure will be reevaluated. We will be conducting the same reevaluation at that point. We will let you know, however, if there are continued closures to our town owned facilities, to town hall, and the justice court. Concurrently, we have complied with the governor's executive order 202.4 that took effect on March 17 which require that we limit our in-office in non-essential staff by 50% and allow remote work in as many cases as possible. As a result, Town Hall and some of our other buildings are now eerily empty and quiet, but it's a good quiet because it means that we are doing all that we can to stop the spread. I do still wanna note that our essential services remain operational and that all of our staff members remain available to assist you by phone, email, and mail, even while they are working from home. This includes myself and our town board members. Please check our website, www.miskuna.org, for a list of our departments and how best to reach them during this time. Lastly, I want to remind you that we all have an important part to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. 
The best way to do that is to stay home unless absolutely necessary to be elsewhere. I know that staying home day after day is an easy thing to ask of you, but ask of you, I will. It is imperative for your safety and for the safety of those around you. So please stay home. While it is impossible to know at this juncture just how long all of this will last, we can take comfort in knowing that we are still all in this together. And one fine day, this will all be behind us. That concludes my supervisor's report. We are now gonna move into our resolutions. We are gonna begin with resolution 220-60, sponsored by Supervisor Cyan. Will the clerk please read? A resolution adopting rules of procedures for legislative committees of the town board. Thank you. Do I have a second on this resolution? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? So Supervisor, we were supposed to have a meeting on the 25th to discuss this and just go through some of the fundamental ideas of it, how it came about, who was involved in developing it, had all the department heads had the opportunity to have some input. That meeting got um, canceled. We weren't able to reschedule it by telephone or anything. So I am going to make a motion to um, table these until we are able to have a discussion about them. And, okay. my, and my questions are simply, I, you know, did all the department heads look at these? Ms. Hwansky raised a very interesting issue, one I hadn't really thought about in this. Um, I don't think any of us as committee chairs, certainly in my 10 years here, have ever told a resident they can't speak at a committee meeting or ever even cut them off. Right. But I guess these, are, you know, we probably need to discuss that piece of it as well, having some sort of privilege of the floor or privilege of the committee. Okay. So can we get that meeting scheduled so we can just go through, have all the department heads looked at it and things like that? I don't know if the town attorney, has Paul Briggs reviewed it? Yes, um, I have reviewed it. My main concern is that this sets an unhealthy precedent to pass procedures such as these without first going through committee. We had a special meeting scheduled with the finance committee. That didn't happen. I think it's... Um, would I would strongly recommend that this be tabled so that we can follow the procedure so that everybody has an opportunity to review it. So well, why don't we schedule uh, why don't we schedule that meeting and get all those um, you know questions asked and um, you know as as Councilwoman McGraw is, is suggesting let's let's work all that out. We can schedule a meeting. She's correct. We did uh, we did talk about having a meeting and that didn't happen. Let's schedule the meeting and then let's agree that that'll take place, you know, in the in the next couple of weeks. And then we can vote on this. I think our next meeting is scheduled for April 30th. Does that mm -hmm. sound reasonable to everyone? That's reasonable. Certainly. Okay. I'm okay with that as long as this doesn't get pushed any further. It's gone on for too long, so we need to get that meeting scheduled so that this this resolution can be amended if it, if necessary and then gotten on our books, as we say. That's great. And Bill, I'm glad that you raised that because one of the things that I've seen, uh, an email about this, whatever, um, the justification for it was that your committee and the chief don't share the minutes. And I know that that's not true. I get the minutes from the chief within an hour of your committee meeting. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Well, yeah, and whether or not they were electronically stored and the like, and I don't know that they should be, I don't know what the ramifications of that are. Um, but it sounds like it's we could probably do it after my economics meeting on Friday um, if that works, or we'll schedule a time as soon as convenient thereafter. Yeah, I think that's perfectly reasonable. If we're all in agreement, it seems that we are. We'll, uh, I'll circulate an email. We'll get another meeting, a special meeting schedule, so we can get to answer all the questions that need to be answered. So we do have a motion to table on the floor that was um, introduced by Councilwoman McGraw. Do I have a second on the motion to table? I'll second. Thank you. 
All those in favor of the motion to table, signify by saying, actually, we'll call the roll. So, Michelle, if you would call the roll on the motion to table. Councilman Delorada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman Partland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five eyes to table. Okay, the motion's table. I look forward to a uh, productive discussion that we will have uh, quite soon. So we did uh, see and voted on resolutions 2020-88 and 2020-89. So we're going to skip to resolution 2020-90, sponsored by Councilman McPartland. The clerk, please read. A resolution authorizing the sale of certain surplus weapons. Thank you. Do I have a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? On the hard copy of this resolution, it's written as 2020-91 on um, the uh, minutes here, or the agenda, it's 90. I think it's just a misprint that we need to correct on the hard copy, it's 2020-90. Yes, thank you. That's correct. So we have a correct in the agenda. The uh, resolution itself, this typo, should be listed as 2020-90. I can correct that. Great, thank you. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. So any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-91, sponsored by Councilman McPartland. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the supervisor to execute any and all necessary documents for the acceptance of grant funding from the Division of Criminal Justice Services for fingerprinting equipment. Thank you. I have a second. Second. Oh, sorry. There's a delay. That was Councilwoman Jake West, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we have a second from Councilwoman Jake West. Is there any discussion? As I said during my committee report, this is a matching grant uh, for new fingerprinting equipment for the police department, which has been uh, by the Department of Justice that's mandatory for our department to get. And uh, our equipment at this point is very old. So this new equipment will help us uh, meet the requirements necessary. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilwoman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-92, sponsored by Councilman McPartland. Will the clerk please read? A resolution adopting the Town of Niskuna Safety Manual. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five eyes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-93, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution amending and adopting a family and medical leave policy. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I do have questions about this. So is this resolution... The, the next resolution just relates to the current crisis. This resolution is our current FMLA policy moving forward? 
in perpetuity? That's what my understanding is. Okay, it's your resolution, so I didn't know. Okay, so um, I, when did, did we discuss this in committee? And is something, is someone harmed in some way if we actually wait to discuss this in committee until the end of next month? Um, it might have to do with some of the new um, legislation that's been passed. Um, okay, I've been trying to get to the bottom of that, but since we these were kind of a, in motion, we didn't really have all of right. them on Friday, and they weren't all completed. I I can't get the answer to maybe Paul Sebesta's on the line. Do we have to do this tonight, or is so, someone is harmed tomorrow morning? That's my question, because we really haven't had a chance to discuss this. Am I, I coming through? To any of the executive orders, yeah. so maybe somebody yeah. can clarify that for us. Sebesta? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yes. Sorry, I'm having a technical glitch with my computer. My speakers or mic, nor mic are working. Um, the the revision from the federal government is happening whether or not we adopt these changes right now. Like, uh, this isn't going to stop them. I mean, you can, Alexis can weigh in on that. Um, so I don't know if there's any harm in it. it Kind of clarifies what we're our interpretation of them yeah and i don't want to speak out of turn but so the resolution itself um so it's the second it's the first whereas clause it says it takes effect april 1st and expires december 31st 2020 and so basically our fmla policy would return back to the way it was prior to the adoption of this resolution okay so and that was my question i just didn't know if you, it only had the end of this year, but it really was going to become our new FMLA policy. Yeah, no, no. And it basically, I mean, like it just incorporates by reference the statute because we're waiting on guidance from, you know, every day the DOL, um, U.S. Exactly. Department. Every day we get another executive order. Exactly. So I figured yeah, that rather okay. than drop the policy, we just incorporated the, so if you, it's the second attachment to the resolution is just yep. the actual text of the, the act. Yep. Okay. That, that was just my only question. I just wanted to you know, because we haven't had the chance, but we don't, right? I mean, every day I send you yeah. the new executive orders, we're all trying to make our way through it quickly as yeah. we can. So great. All right. Thank you very and much for your work on with, this. With respect to the next resolution, it will be yeah. you know, the same. That step, yeah, that one was clearer that that was just for this situation. Okay. Thank you. And Alexis, thank you very much for yeah, no problem. All your, all your, all your Maybe will somebody will buy you a diamond ring now to thank you, but thank you very much. This is great. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Yeah, uh, can I? Oh, my my question is pertaining to the sick leave policy. I'm sorry. Okay, wait on that. Will yeah, that's next. Michelle, we can't hear you. I don't even see Michelle anymore. Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilwoman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five eyes. Then this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-94, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution amending and adopting a COVID-19 sick leave policy. Thank you. Can I go second? I will second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? So I'll just ask that same question, I guess, Yasmin or Alexis. Um, so this is just for the current situation and it will expire when? The 31st also, even though the... It's the second where I thought. Yep. Yeah, so you're correct. It's just for this current situation. Okay, so, but we're gonna, we're gonna say that the current situation ends on December 31st. Oh, okay. okay. And just because this is all, um, we've been trying to do this all so quickly, 
Um, this is a, not standard practice, but Paul Sebesta, you have a question? I don't want to well, get into practice, but. No, I understand. Um, section four documentation required. It's just, it's still kind of a draft policy. It says need to discuss with Sebesta and incorporate. Um, is that going away, that section? <laughs> That was my next question. Okay. Yep. Yes. I, and I mean, the last whereas clause, I think, is kind of the catch all, which, you know, you guys are free to make a motion to amend, but given the, you know, rapidly evolving, you know, situation and amount of guidance that's coming out, I kind of put in a catch all that says, you know, whereas Office of the Foreign Attorney is recommended we adopt it, but notes that the policy should be reviewed and amended once the regulation is implementing. Um, the federal act are enacted and additional guidance is made available regarding documentation requirements. So yeah, the final, I mean, since it takes effect tomorrow, um, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty as Councilman McGraw said, but um, I think this is going to be, we've gotten direct guidance and we need to enact it by tomorrow and that more is to come with respect to um, regulations. So. Mm -hmm. However, I pointed out that documentation is required and all of these one, two, three, and four that follow it talk about upon request or puts the onus on my office to track down information. I don't know, that that's unworkable. I'd prefer not to have that. So Paul, just point that out one more time. I prefer not to have that. Well, under the on that page, need to discuss what's best. That um, number one, uh, an employee subject to federal, state, da da da, shall authorize the agency department that issued the order to disclose. So, an employee is going to give authorization for them to disclose, and then I, I need to obtain this. I, I can't go tracking it down. This sounds like they just give a, a release form, and if they send it, they send it. If they don't, I've got to go find it. Number two, upon request by the town, um, it, it shall provide upon request by the town. Who is requesting this and why are we requesting it? It's required. It shouldn't be requested. It should, upon being provided by the town. Number three, the top of the next page, provide documentation or authorization for the town to confirm with the issuing agency. So now I'm gonna get a release to go after these agencies. I can do that. And then further on, two more paragraphs upon request by the town shall provide documentation. I think right. this is all yes. mandatory documentation that I should not be getting releases to track down or have to request. Okay. Well, I think my question would be, is this, um, is this prescribed, is this a prescribed policy? So is this in conformance with what has been suggested by the Department of Labor? I mean, I could speak I to that. Oh, sorry, Paul, you can go. I was going to say that just. Well, that section I, I clipped and is here was, was guidance from the Department of Labor. What was and that? And it says it's required. Right. So well, ours I is conflicting with one of the guidances. And these guidances, I, you know, God bless everybody involved in this. These guidances are coming out once an hour. Um, so to try to keep up with all of them is very, very tough. But I'm not sure that this, it, it seems to me that this is in conflict with what the guidance from DOL is. Paul, is that your read of it? Anybody named Paul? That, that's my read. This isn't wishy-washy. You must require your employee to provide you with Appropriate documentation. I, I maybe they've changed their position. I can't keep up with it either, but okay. we're not even close to what they're requiring. And I can't go tracking this stuff down. It just, it'd be All impossible. Right. So to I'm going to ask the same question. Should, do we need to do this tonight or is somebody going to be harmed tomorrow morning if we don't do it? It sounds like we need to do it, make a lot of changes right now. We need to do it by tonight, this is Alexis speaking, except if you're uncomfortable with the upon request. So my reading of the guidance and of the uh, federal, you know, the, the law that was uh, passed is that we have to make the allowance available, um, meaning we can't withhold it saying until you provide this document, you don't get the paid sick leave and we'll retroactive it. We have to do it now, um, but as- Yeah, being later on, it would come late. 
I'm not yeah, no yeah. problem with that. So I mean, I think we, you can say that you can either make a motion to amend and strike the upon request, or you can just say in the resolution itself that you would incorporate by reference, you know, um, the the text of the statute, and that would, you know, we can continue to amend this as that be. Okay. Yeah, I pre I prefer that. It's very well laid out on who provides what and how, and you know. In the guidance, in the DOL guidance. Yeah. Right? Yeah, by now. The guidance is explicit. All right. So can we work out the language now to amend this to to get it done tonight? Alexis, can you give yeah. us a recommendation? I mean, I, it's just hard for me to follow. I would say that um, you could put in, instead of trying to go through and do a motion to right. amend right. Right. Exactly. itself in the resolution, just do, um, you know, whereas uh, to the extent this policy conflicts with U.S. Department of Labor guidance issued, on implementation of extended, um, you know, the Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act, uh, the guidance will trump the town's policy and the policy will be updated, you know, as need be. So do we want to do that now and then pass a clean resolution at the end of next month? I'm trying I to give you a chance to write, to write the last whereas, Alexis. Yeah, yeah, no, no, gonna ask you for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So do we want to do that? We would just add one more whereas and amend this one. I'm happy to sponsor that amendment. Okay. Then, so do you want to add a further resolved? Is it another whereas? I thought it was another whereas. You say it's a further resolved? Um either one. I would I would do it at the end for the resolve. Right. The last okay. Right. Yeah. So I will, I will motion to amend the resolution to read further, to add the further resolved clause as stated very eloquently by Deputy Town Attorney Alexis Kim. Second. Thank you. Yeah. Will the clerk please call the roll on the amendment? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes on the amendment. We have five ayes on the amendment. And now will the clerk please call the roll on the motion as amended? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes as amended. Motion passes as amended. Next resolution 2020-95, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution designating the superintendent of water and sewer as the town engineer. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020 96, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution to authorize a warrant for the first half of 2020 residential and commercial utility rents. Can I get a second? Second. Excuse Thank me. You. This one just, I'm sorry. I'm going to do, I'm got, I've got it. So I just need to uh, clarify this. There's a couple of just editing mistakes in this. So I'm going to make a motion to give this a different title that, that says, uh, resolution to authorize the warrant for the second half of 2019. Of 2019, okay. Yep, second half of 2019. Second so we're half. always, as everybody knows, and now we're a little bit more, um, we're always six months behind in water yep. and sewer. Got it. So we have motion to amend. I will second that motion. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll on the motion to amend? Councilman Delarada? 
Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes on amendment. Amendment passes. Will the clerk please call the roll on the motion as amended? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilwoman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes on the amended resolution. Motion as amended passes. Next resolution, 2020-97, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing payment for repair to a dehumidification system at the water treatment plant. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-98, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution awarding a contract for procurement and installation of fuel storage station. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-99, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution permanently appointing a maintenance worker in the water and sewer department. Thank you. I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-100, sponsored by Councilman Delarada. Will the clerk please read? A resolution awarding a contract for Aqueduct Park Dock and Landscaping Improvement Project. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jacobs? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020-101, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing certain budgetary modifications. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-102, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the supervisor to execute a license agreement with a local artist for use of Lions Park. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-103, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? 
a resolution awarding a bid for temporary labor for removal of town's weekly yard waste pickup. Thank you. I will second. Is there any discussion? Yes, Supervisor. I'd just like to note that um, we will not be doing this hiring immediately. We're going to be using Parks folks for a while. Um, so just wanted to note that. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-104, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the purchase of a trailer-mounted hot box for use by the highway department. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Starting discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. This resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-105, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution, resolution authorizing the purchase of a 10-wheel dump truck, plow, and sander attachments for use in the highway department. Thank you. I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-106, sponsored by Councilman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the purchase purchase of a Packer truck for use in the highway department. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-107, sponsored by Councilwoman Jacob. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the purchase of a new Holland Workmaster tractor and attachments for use by the highway department. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman, Councilman McPartland? Aye. Sorry. Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-108, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the purchase of a three-wheel field maintainer for use by the Parks Department. Thank you. I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-109, sponsored by Councilman Jacob. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the purchase of a John Deere compact ex excavator for use in the Parks Department. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jacob? Yes. Councilman McGraw? 
Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-110, sponsored by Councilman J. Clark. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the sale of certain surplus town equipment through public auction. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquis? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-111, sponsored by Councilman Jacob. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing submittal of grant applications to the Niskuna Community Foundation. Thank you. I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquis? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-112, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution appointing a van driver slash program aide for the senior center. Thank you. I will second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I have a couple of questions about this one. When we met in finance, it was raised, and then it, we said we weren't going to hire anyone anytime soon. And I was surprised at that because we had made um, a pretty important decision as it related to this, the bus driver the month before. So when will they be starting? And is this the same rate the previous bus driver was paid? Um, it's my understanding that it's roughly the same as the previous bus driver. Um, the reason why we are hiring this individual is because we were uh, left in the lurch, so to speak, and sure. uh, we, we did need someone to fill in. So, um, for all intents and purposes, this is, while not an emergency um, appointment, um, we provisionally entered into agreement with this individual to provide uh, van driver program aid services to us with the understanding that we would be bringing um, this as a resolution to be voted on by the town. Okay. This is a previous employee, right? He used, yes, he yeah. used to okay. work uh, for the town. Um, and then I think he took a brief respite, um, was in retirement, so to speak, for a little bit. And then uh, we pulled him back out of retirement, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. He worked at Highway? Uh, I believe he worked for the senior center. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, I mean, that whole department, highway parks. Yep. Okay. Um, but nobody knows that if this is the same amount we paid the previous driver. I believe it's slightly more. It's and by slightly, slightly, I mean more than the dollar. What's that? It was the amount set forth in the salary schedule for the van driver program aid. Okay, so this probably includes the two percent year over year. Got it. That's why Thank it's not you. flat. Yep. You're welcome. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-113, sponsored by Councilman Jacob. Will the clerk please read? A so we resolution. Need... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. A resolution to employ additional employees in the Office of Community Programs. Thank so you. We, we actually need to table this. Um, as we're not going to be going forth with uh, spring soccer as planned, but um, hopefully, again, as mentioned, we'll be able to resume activities. Mm -hmm. So, do I make a motion to table, or does this need to be seconded first? Um, well, if we don't second, essentially, it, uh, 
dies on the floor and it can come back. So we can do that or um, we can second in the motion to table. That's fine, let's do it then. We'll table it. Okay. The first way you suggested. The first one? Yes. Okay. So I'll we'll agree, no motion, uh, no second. And then we will bring this back um, in April. So we're gonna move on to resolution 2020-114 sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing payment for services, professional services rendered relating to issuance of bonds. Thank you, can I get a second? Second. Thank you, is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilwoman Jakewith. Yes. Councilwoman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-115, sponsored by Supervisor Syed, Councilwoman McGraw, Councilman Delarada, Councilman McPartland, and Councilwoman Jakewith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the assessor to extend the deadline to apply or reapply for partial tax exemption for real property of senior citizens in consideration of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Can I get a second? Well, we, okay, we've all we're all sponsoring it, so we really can't second it, but <laughs> pull somebody That's off. True. So I just want one one point. I want to make thank you. So I want to thank you for bringing this to our attention, Mr. Assessor. Thank, thank you for voting on it. I just want to make one point that the cutoff it should be May 26, not May 28. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, so. You can gladly knock me off the resolution and I'll second it. Great, John. Actually, as amended. Yeah, well. Okay, so we have John seconding on the motion, um, but I'm sorry, Eric, what was that new date? If you could say the that. 26. May 26. May 26, okay. So I'm gonna make a motion to amend uh, second where, or first whereas clause where it says April 15th, it's gonna be May 22nd? No, 26. no, no. 26. In the resolved clause, I'll make the motion, Yasmin. Oh, it's so the end? In the resolved clause, right? That's what you're saying. It would be from April 15th to May 26, 2020. Did we have a second for that? That's correct. Second. Okay. Thank you. So it's the result, the last resolved clause. Yes. Okay. Okay. So Councilwoman McGraw made the motion to amend. Um, Councilman McCart one second it, correct? Okay. I'll, I'll, yes, yeah. build it. Okay, thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll on the amendment? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes to amend. Okay, now the motion as amended. Will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquis? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes, that is amended. Motion as amended passes. Next, we have the introduction of the local law. We have resolution 2020-116, sponsored by Councilman McGraw and Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution calling for a public hearing on a proposed local law to amend Chapter 27 of the Code of the Town of Neskumina to provide order residency requirements for the position of town controller. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. 
Councilman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-117, sponsored by Councilman Bellarada. Will the clerk please read? A resolution calling for a public hearing on proposed local law to amend Chapter 98 of the Code of the Town of Muscuna to establish fees for sketch plan and site plan applications. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And the resolution passes. Last resolution 2020-118, sponsored by Councilman McPartland. Will the clerk please read? A resolution calling for a public hearing on proposed local law to amend Chapter 55 of the Code of the Town of Niskuna to discontinue annual registra registering and monitoring of residential and commercial emergency alarm systems by the Town of Niskuna Police Department. Thank you. I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. That brings us to the end of our road this evening. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. Excuse me, Madam Supervisor, I just had yeah. one additional question. Could yeah. we please get a list of everyone who is working and considered essential? I heard some things tonight that didn't, that surprised me. Yes, yeah, okay. I can circulate that list. And it's also um, posted to our town website um, right at the top of www.org. Right. You click on the red tab. Yep. That will take you to a page that lists out um, our departments, who's open, what days, how long right. they closed. Right, but it doesn't have which, I, I'm more of a, um, a town That's board a issue, of which employees are being considered essential right now and what functions they're providing sure. that are essential. Sure. Okay. We yeah. can provide no, I, know, I know the red tab on your website, but that I'm talking about just who is actually working and considered essential. Yes, we can okay, get um, a specific employee list. Uh, that would be great. Who's not? We could do that. Okay. Terrific. Thank you. You're very welcome. And also, Supervisor, um, do you know what the status is with my meeting on Friday? Are we going to do it as we are now? And how is that? It, has the notice been set out? How is that all set up? That's a great question. So right now, um, we have a few of the meetings that are going to be moved that are on the public calendar. Um, luckily, we are in adequate amount of time that we can give a public notice. Um, for instance, tomorrow's uh, regularly held or scheduled highway person rec is now going to be held next Wednesday. Um, and that's something that we had pre-discussed and predetermined. Um, we wanted to wait, engage the success or not success of um, how this meeting went tonight. So um, with that meeting, there's adequate public uh, notice that we'll be changing that to next Wednesday. Um, if you would like to hold uh, your meeting on Friday, you are free to do so. If you would like to delay it, you are also free to do so, so long as we provide adequate um, public notice on the website by moving that date on the public web calendar. Um, it could be held uh, the same way that we're holding this meeting through Google Meet, or it could be held through the GoToMeeting teleconference. So um, it, it really is subject to the chair um, and how they want to hold their individual meetings. So I'll, I'll leave that up to each chair. Um, I think this worked well tonight. Um, I think it uh, is a good format. Um, so I would encourage everyone to um, use this technology that we've used here this evening, but again, it's it's up to, up to you. 
Well, my meeting is probably a little less important right now because there's nothing, I don't believe, construction going on. But we certainly could still have it. If we don't have it, it sounds like we have to notify the public. We don't really have to notify them, but we should on at Wednesday the latest. Yes. I'm, I'm comfortable preparing an agenda by Friday, John, if you want me to. I um, I can do that by Friday. Like you say, it is a little late because we've been canceling all of our public meetings, but I do think there's mm -hmm. still benefit to holding it. It just depends on, I think, if you are able to have it. Sure, definitely can. Um, it, Laura, just give me a call tomorrow and we'll talk about it. Sounds good. Thanks, Laura. Bye. So are we, Supervisor, are you saying that we should be contacting Bill Lawrence if we're wanting to have our meeting held with the same manner we did tonight's meeting? Yes, and he can issue new instructions for each successive meeting. It'll probably be very similar in instructions to how we were able to log into this meeting. Um, I, I'm not certain on that um, as to, you know, how he sets it up, um, but yes, um, contact Bill um, and just loop everybody in who's on your committee. And then he'll loop in the public successively. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions before I entertain the to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Bill. I will second that motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay, we are now adjourned. And before I leave you tonight, I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite quotes that's circulating around social media. I'm sure you've all seen it. Just remember, you're not stuck at home. You're safe at home. So I'd encourage you all to just stay home, stay safe. I hope to see you soon on the other side. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Be well, be safe. Good night, you too. Thank you.